night, Brisbane goes under. Authorities warn the worst is still to come. Elsewhere, dozens are still missing as rescue and recovery begins. South Australia prepares for a wet weather onslaught. And spooked winery staff embark on a ghostly mission. 7 News Special Edition with Jessica Adamson. Good evening. The centre of Brisbane presents an extraordinary sight tonight as the swollen Brisbane River bursts its banks and inundates thousands of homes and businesses. The pitch's as bad, if not worse, in Ipswich, where vast areas are underwater. Further west, in the Lockyer Valley, rescue teams have made more grim discoveries. The death toll is now 12. 51 people are still missing, with grave fears for nine of them. We start our coverage in Australia's third biggest city. The Brisbane River, a pleasure cruiser. But what's about to happen will not please the owner. Someone's pride and joy crushed and sunk. Swept away to join an extraordinary tide of debris sweeping down this watery highway to hell. The river has become a raging brown gutter, awash with boats, pontoons, household debris. Already, a riverside restaurant, appropriately named Drift, is adrift and sailing away. And a new threat, the Mogul Ferry, a pump that crosses up river, is threatening to break up and might have to be blown up. We don't want to take the risk that this ferry will uh, become effectively uh, a torpedo coming down the river. It peaked around 4.5 metres this afternoon, then at 4am tomorrow should hit 5.5 metres. The terrible flood of 1974 only managed 5.4. Australia's third largest city in real danger of being overwhelmed by the forces of nature. 2,000 streets and up to 40,000 properties will be flooded. Three quarters of them homes, the remainder shops and offices, parks and gardens. In the words of the Premier, The worst natural disaster in our history. Certainly, for most Australians, the worst city flood in living memory. Homes like these west of the city at Indrapilly, where riverside mansions sell for millions. Every second one, it seemed, had a jetty and a boat. Now, just so much expensive flotsam, floating rapidly out to sea. Or crushed, like this pontoon wrapped around the Goodwill footbridge. One hapless skipper has his sails up, but there's no wind, no headway. All he can do is hang on and hope. This luxury home is being destroyed by water and fire from a ruptured gas or fuel line. Residents have fled to higher ground, this couple carrying backpacks and their dog. For this man, the only way out was the roof. He saved the furniture, others not so lucky. Here, a floating armchair, there, a the chest port of, of Brisbane drawers. is closed to shipping. Power's been cut to the CBD and low-lying suburbs, like Paddington, just west of the CBD, where residents scrambled to evacuate homes and shops. People that I've never met came in and helped us move everything out today. It's a great community. Not far away is Suncorp Stadium, home of the Brisbane Broncos, local wits now calling it Sun Flood. The water's coming from Toowoomba into the Wyvernhoe catchment, where it must be released into the Brisbane River. This is how fast the water is rising. This vision is not fast forward. That's really how quick it happens. Everyone's getting out. Business is closing down. The only one that looks like recovering soon is this. But the mood overall is grim. Brisbane is on a war footing. Defence has deployed 15 helicopters, C-130s, 150 troops. Queensland has already faced some dark days and there are dark days still ahead. Chris Reason, Seven Thanks, news. Chris. The centre of Brisbane's a ghost town. Power's been cut, forcing companies to lock their doors. And it could be days before office towers and shops can reopen for business. It's Australia's third largest capital, and today it definitely wasn't open for business. A trickle of cars, empty buses, hundreds of millions of dollars in lost productivity. Have you ever cut a whole city off? No. Not on purpose? No. While the city wasn't busy, these guys were Energex workers with the power to turn off your power. And they did all over the city. The Stanford Hotel sits right alongside the Brisbane River. It was the first to be switched off last night. No air conditioning, no lights and no lifts. Oldham Hansen had swapped a Greenland winter for a Queensland flood. The, the hotel management was very nice to us. But... Yeah, but it is a little bit confusing, isn't it? Then, as the water breached the riverbanks, the power was progressively turned off. Building by building, from office blocks to towering apartment blocks, whose residents had a bird's-eye view of the swollen Brisbane River. We're trying to isolate certain sections of the, um, of the power grid, 
so that if the water gets up too high, it won't. Obviously, water and electricity don't mix real well. They'll blow up, so we're trying to turn them off before that happens. Most high-rise buildings have their own substations. A few, but just a few, have them built above ground. Most are at ground level or in basements. Not good in a flood. Without power, Brisbane City's working population stayed home, turning the streets over to tourists and the curious. They won't be back until the power is. Jeff Parry, 7 News. Upstream now to Ipswich, where one third of the town's underwater and residents are waiting out the flood in evacuation centres. The Bremer River's been steadily rising all day and it's expected to peak this evening. The Ipswich motorway through Goodna is normally more than half a kilometre from the Brisbane River. Today, it's in the middle of it. It's, it's just extraordinary to see the, the amount of damage in this, this one relatively small community uh, that, that's had the Brisbane River simply come straight over the top of it. The drive through signs make a mockery of the fast food stores on the side of the motorway, almost completely underwater. While residents watch in disbelief, rescue workers check the flooded homes for anyone who hasn't made it out. Nearby, on the outskirts of Ipswich, a heartbreaking sight. Horses swim for their lives in a desperate search for higher ground. Rooftops offer the only chance, but they can't climb up. Rescue workers try to offer comfort, but there's little else they can do. There's just too much water. 